Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Hey guys, welcome to the show. We are presented today by Compassion International, the most trusted child development ministry in the world. And they're doing such a great thing right now because COVID-19 has left nearly 70,000 children without a sponsor. And right now they're in an initiative called Team Up, where you can join with pro athletes to help fill what is the capacity of an average NFL stadium, 70,000 children potentially going without a sponsorship. It's a dire situation, and this is where you can come in and make a difference. Check them out at Compassion.com slash Team Up to learn more. Compassion.com slash Team Up. We're also presented by Water Mission. Check them out at watermission.org. Right now, they are working to stop the global spread of COVID-19 by providing urgently needed safe water, sanitation, and hygiene solutions to refugee settlements and other vulnerable communities. They do such great work. Check them out at watermission.org. Today on the podcast, we welcome Matthew Driscoll. He is the North Florida head basketball coach. And just giving you a heads up, I didn't ask a ton of questions in this podcast. I think I asked five and it's a 50 minute podcast. Matthew Driscoll can talk. He's perfect for sports spectrum podcasting. And this guy has a ton of of energy and a ton of wisdom. Get a notebook out, get a pen out, get your iPad out, get your iPhone out, whatever it is, go to that note section and trust me on this, you're going to want to take a lot of notes from Matthew Driscoll. Now this guy is the head basketball coach, as I mentioned, at North Florida, three-time Atlantic Sun regular season champion, three-time Atlantic Sun coach of the year, including 2020, the 2019-2020 team was 21 and 12, 13 and 3 in the Atlantic Sun, had a great opportunity to go to the big dance before the postseason was canceled due to COVID 19 and the pandemic. But like I said, this guy has a ton of energy. You're going to love hearing from Matthew Driscoll, North Florida head basketball coach. Just watch when I just say hello, watch his response. He's awesome. And he joins us here today on Sports Spectrum. Coach Driscoll, welcome to Sports Spectrum. Well, I'm a really, I'm, I'm excited to be here and, and more importantly to share um, exactly either where we are, where we're going. My wife makes the comment all the time that normal is only a setting on the washing machine. And if you think about history yeah. and you go back to the Depression or you go back to World War II or you go back to Vietnam or you go back to uh, segregation, you go back to all those moments leading up to even... 9-11, all those things that have transpired in our lives, you know, it's, there's change is just inevitable. It's, it's, it's going to be taking place all the time yeah. and how it takes place and the way in which you approach it, you know, like, you know, Charles Wendall always said, you know, life's 10% what happens to you, 90% how you react. So your attitude is, is very cyclical because attitude as, as you know, produces actions and your actions will give you a result. Your result's going to give you a consequence, good or bad. It's just the way life is. Free will is such a a powerful two words. And then right after you get that consequence, you're back to your attitude again. So very, very cyclical how this thing's going to come out. And um, anybody who's looking for things to become the way they were is really fool's gold in the sense that, you know, there's that saying, believe there's good. But when you really look at believe there's good, it really says be the good. It's how we can take that good in us and that servant mentality in us and then make others understand that. So I'm really excited about that and eager for that transition to start to occur. Yeah, I've been hearing the words new normal. Uh, I've been using the word now normal. And then others are saying next normal, which is kind of what you were alluding to as we go into wherever we're going to go into. But I would like to go back to, for just a second because that 2019-2020 season, Coach Driscoll, was a pretty good one for you guys. And you were on the verge yeah. and on the trajectory, we'll say. You never know how basketball games are going to play out to make a run and to, to potentially make it to the big dance. You had a really good season, 21-12, and 13-3 and in the Atlantic Sun 
Can you kind of look back now and some of the emotions and thoughts that come to your mind when you think about uh, this past season and then really just having to kind of press pause when you're in the middle of go, go, go? Boy, that's a loaded question because (laughs) if you think about us, we were senior dominated, had no seniors the year before, had to let go. Uh, One of the best players on the team was a junior, averaged a double-double. He's now with Providence. And at that moment two years ago, when we were going through kind of what we were going through, we were on a six-game slide. And when you're on a six-game slide, a lot of things in your life become outside of you. And when you know that – we tell our guys this all the time. Your heart controls – everything you do, whatever you do, please understand it is not your mind. It is your heart. Because when you squeeze a lime, you get lime juice. When you squeeze an orange, you get orange juice. And when you squeeze a lemon, you're going to get lemon juice. And when you get squeezed, that's who you're going to, that's who you are. So your heart, and we talk about this with our guys is so critical. It, you know, it says, and, and I phrase this with them all the time because I'm also very conscientious of not only who I am, what I stand for, but also where I am and where I work. And the last thing I'm going to do is do something that's going to go against law and against things that I'm not going to do. However, in a book that I love to read, there's a book and it's called Matthew. And in that book, it says, wherever (laughs) your treasure is, there your heart and thoughts yes. will also be. So when we talk about with our guys is we tell the guys like the key to peace and happiness and, 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 and your daily life and all those things comes from here. And if we learn to control, we can control. So as we were going down that slide, at that moment, as a coach, you're just, you're all over the place. And, We figured out a way. Now, understand something. We were three and two, had a chance. You know, Liberty and Lipscomb tied for the championship that year. We were actually really good, and we thought we could give both of them a heck of a run. Yeah. And what happened was we had lost to Liberty at Liberty. We had already lost to Lipscomb at Lipscomb. So as a coach, in your brain, you're thinking two toughest road games, two teams that are supposed to win the league. So now we're three and two. They still got to come to our crib. You see what I'm saying? And we had two home games in a row coming back. Yeah. So at that moment, instead of blasting this older group, I actually presented it that way. Looking back on it, talking to the guys and even the seniors, they said, Coach, we really thought it was a good time for you to blast us. And really what I felt was it was a good time to say, hey, listen, Here's where we are. Here's what we've done. Man, let's – because we played like – we played Saturday. We played again on Martin Luther King Day, which was a Monday. Yeah. That started – so now we start to six-game slide. And in the slide, we lost to the worst team in the league on the road who finished last. And then Lipscomb embarrassed us at home. Embarrassed us at home. Mm -hmm. So there's your six in a row, right? And then you say to yourself – seek wise counsel, seek, you know, wise guidance and all these different things. And I don't know about you, but like different things occur for me. And all of a sudden you're getting these answers that are placed right in front of you. And and you've got to recognize that this is it. So Lipscomb's head coach is Casey Alexander. So now we're talking about two years ago, three years ago, right? This is all, this is how it works. It's how life works. Absolutely. And I tell this to the guys, I, I got a presentation I do. I got a background, dots on the map. And, and when I'm, I've married a couple of my players and officiated their weddings and different stuff, and I talk about dots on the map all the time. But three years earlier, Lipscomb was beating us by like 18, and we ended up beating them at home, and they had a dragged on, like, unbelievable fight in their locker room, right? Just a verbal, you know, all this stuff came out, you know? Because they shouldn't be losing to us and yada, yada, yada. Right. And what's crazy is after that, they lose to Gulf Coast at home. They're up 18 and lose with 15 minutes to go. 
Hmm. They end up going to the NCAA tournament that year. Yes. Casey got an email, a text from his AD going through a car wash. And he told him, treat the team like this car. Wash it off. And when you get done on the other side, move on to the next day. Wow. And so Casey calls me after he whooped us because we have a really good relationship. And he said, Coach, remember what I told you where we were in the locker room a year ago? That's where you are right now. So then I started like, how are we going to flip this? So I went to the video I always go to when I need some guidance to flip things. And it's, it's a non, it's a, it's a movie called any given Sunday, Al Pacino's famous speech, four minutes. Yeah. We go to North Alabama and it was like the perfect storm because they hadn't lost at home yet in the league. So it was, and we had beaten them at home early in the year. We beat them by like 20 some. So you kind of got a double-edged sword. The guys are lost six in a row, but they think they can win this one. But the, so obviously, as a coach, I went with a you know these guys haven't lost yet, and you lost six in a row. Like they and you beat them by twenty. Like they can't wait to beat you. But anyways, my point is, you're tested all the time. the 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 real the the realness of you is tested all the time. And Martin Luther King said it best, right? Where do you stand in times of challenges and controversy? is truly the measure of a man. Yeah. And as that was coming out and as we were moving through that, so anyways, we, we, we won seven in a row, including throwing that guy off the team and beating Liberty, who went to the NCAA tournament last year at home, down 13 with eight minutes to go, and we win going away. Not when I say going away, but we didn't, it wasn't like it was a, a lucky shot at the buzzer or whatever. Right. Not lucky. I don't know why I said that. A, a shot at the buzzer. I don't believe in luck and consequence or a coincidence. But so we get the seven in a row. And then this year, obviously, we're one of the favorites to win it. And as we're going through the year, we pick the theme. We've theme, we're theme driven every year. Last year was iron sharpens iron the year before. We picked the theme, stay in your lane. And we really talked about how when you stay on course, walking steadily on the road, everything will be revealed to you. It's when you look to the side, you look, you know, they say, you know, why is the front windshield the best way to view, view life? Because it's the biggest window. It's got the greatest view. The rear view mirror is what it is. It's there for moments. It's there for certain, uh, you know, for certain situations, but it's not there for your life. That's not your life. That's be, that's over. Yesterday's history. Tomorrow's a mystery. Today's the greatest day we have. So as we're moving forward, it says that you'll walk straight on the road. It's set. But here's the key. Prescribe the right way to live. It's prescribed. So therefore, you have to do your free will. You've got to do your part. So if we all do our part and we're all conferencing our role, because we had everybody back. And we don't worry about who's a leading scorer, who's a leading rebounder, who's a leading assist. Who, we don't worry about that. We had five guys average double figures again. We led the country with three-pointers, one of the best assist turns, one of the most efficient offenses in the country. I mean, we're phenomenal because we had really good players. And they understood that, and it continued to be something that we moved you know, forward with. And we tell the guys all the time, like, Work is how you get profit. Work. Yeah. Nobody says to lay around like it says in Thessalonians. It, like, don't lie idle. Like, you got to work. Like, you got to do things. You got to move forward. But it also says, and our guys will verbatim this to you, talk gets you poverty. We actually did a breakdown for the guys this year. We actually showed them what poverty, what, what, it, like, I started thinking to myself, like, I don't even know if they, they even understand what that might mean. Yeah. So I actually studied it and did a study and figured out what it means. And there's there's three ways not to there's three ways that if you do if you don't do these three things, there's a good chance you're you you won't live in poverty. And they're not rocket science. But my point is, as you're demonstrating these things to the guys, it takes two minutes, three minutes, but as you're showing these things to the guys. We're going through the season because we have to play a brutal schedule. Brutal. 
Florida, Florida State, Creighton, Dayton, Iowa, mm. and who am I missing? Syracuse. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know, to try to get that momentum going and get that juice flowing. And praise God, we just look at ourselves as let's apples to apples, mid major, mid major. We were 19 and six this year. Yeah. There's only three teams in America. And I'm sorry, there's only 27 teams in America in, in the last six years that have won three or more conference championships. And we're one of them. That's right. So we're going down a, a very, very, very narrow path. However, stay in your lane. So that's what we really build it on. And, you know, when you do that, one of the things you've got to do is you've got to edit and focus your choices, you know, during those moments. And, and as we were going through it, you know, it is what it is. Like the crazy thing is like this group, when they came into us, they were on the back end of two back-to-back championships. Right. So they were about to graduate and be that them dudes, the dudes that never hung a banner, the dudes that stopped that particular historical part of what we were doing. Yeah. And interesting, we almost felt like it was so powerful. We used to have the banner in our locker room. We took it down this year. Hmm. And we put a March Madness thing up instead because we felt like it was almost weighing them down every day seeing it knowing because the seniors verbatim this like they would they would articulate this to you like the expectations and the pressures that they had coming in were enormous and then going forward the greatest thing is now they're walking away we got seven new dudes coming in six freshmen really talented we signed six 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 seven six eight six nine six ten early we just signed a six four and a six seven like really talented dudes and like they're walking in with the same expectations and the same pressures, Mm. which is awesome. Yeah. Because in reality, you know, that's life. But when you talk about that editing part, we tell our guys all the time, as we go through this season, we're four and one and and Liberty was five and oh coming in. Now they were 19 and one. Coach had done a great job with them. Yeah. And we were 11 and nine just because of the differences. You know, whatever. It's like, doesn't matter. What matters is we're four and one. They're five. They're five and oh. Winner's going to be in first place. And, and we ended up, you know, beating them here. And as we did that, and as we continued to unfold this, you know, that night, the, the guys were talking about stay in your lane, stay in your lane, stay in your lane, stay in your lane. So, you know, it's something that's really important to us and for them, because when you edit and focus that other power that's inside you, that tries to get you to ah, take a couple more shots. Ah, don't worry about passing today. <gasps> You're almost at a thousand points. Why don't you hurry up and get it tonight? Yeah. You know, that person or that thing that that's inside you that you're battling every day. It's it's the reality. It's true. So you've got to continually pour in and believe that you're doing these things for the greater good of of everyone, you know? We'll get back to our conversation with Matthew Driscoll from North Florida in just a little bit, but want to tell you about Compassion.com and the great work that Compassion International is doing right now because COVID-19 has left nearly 70,000 children without a sponsor. You know, normally they'd be going to stadiums uh, and large events, even concerts, and a lot of sponsorships come from those presentations, and they're not able to do that now because of COVID-19 and everything being canceled. So that leaves 70,000 children without a sponsor, and that's a dangerous place to be. It's a dire situation, and, you know, it's led to more sickness. Parents aren't working. Food is scarce. It's a dangerous time. And so Compassion is teaming up with pro athletes to help fill the stadium. What is a stadium? Well, 70,000 children, that's the capacity of an average NFL 
Stadium. So you can help as well, teaming up with pro athletes and Compassion International by donating to help these children through the critical, critical next 12 months. Every donation helps fill a seat towards a year of needed funding for these children. Check it out at Compassion.com slash team up. Compassion.com slash team up and help release a child from poverty. Help save a child from poverty today. We're also presented by Water Mission. We love what Water Mission is about, a nonprofit Christian engineering ministry. And right now they're working to stop the global spread of COVID-19 by providing urgently needed safe water, sanitation, and hygiene solutions to refugee settlements and other vulnerable communities right now, fighting the global water crisis. We love Water Mission. We're so glad to have them as partners and sponsors here, serving more than 5 million people in 56 countries. The crazy thing about Water Mission, and they provided some statistics, just some general water crisis statistics, 2.1 billion people lack access to safe water. 4.4 billion people lack access to adequate sanitation. That's right, B billion people. That's insane. So pray about helping them, pray about partnering with them, learn more, and pray for them by going to watermission.org, watermission.org. Now back to our conversation with Matthew Driscoll from North Florida, joining us here today on Sports Spectrum. Let me ask you about your faith, how it guides you, how it motivates you. You've mentioned the book of Matthew, you've mentioned a couple other uh, verses in scripture and kind of how that guides you, even your mentality or your theme Last year, I think you said, was iron sharpens iron. I mean, that's straight from Proverbs. Two years ago, yeah. Two years ago. Tell me about your faith, where that, where that comes from and how that fuels you. So I, I really have to give a ton of credit to, to a couple people. Um, and, and one of them really is, is my wife. Um, she's incredible. And, and our marriage, praise God, is, is God-centered. And um, I would, was not that good at it. Right. Um, I was, I was more of a Christian by convenience. And then coach Lang, my best friend and, and best man in my wedding died in 2010. But before that, his faith was incredible and he just continually poured into me. And then when I, when I got the Baylor, that's when I really, Complete, not completely, but that's when I really was, I don't want to say all in, but I think that's probably the best way to phrase it. Yeah. And Coach Jerome Tang and Coach Paul Mills, two of the most incredible men with our leader, Scott Drew, like those three dudes, like they just, you could just see it. You could just feel it. And then, and then I, I always had that energy. I've always had that servant i've always been a servant my whole life and and i wasn't a bad person by any stretch of the imagination but i certainly wanted to be better and i certainly wanted people to see i wanted to be a beacon i wanted people to understand that jesus christ was my lord and savior i wanted people to understand that so i got away from that i don't want to say like the wizard of oz but the, you know like i wasn't behind a curtain anymore yeah and, um, and this is actually the first time I've ever said this publicly. Um, but those guys really, really, really helped me to understand um, so much greater of what I already knew, what I've already had talked about, what I'd already believed, what I knew was inside my heart. But I didn't, cor- I didn't connect the dots. Or not, um, that's not, that, no, I don't want to say that. I didn't mesh it well enough with kind of my body language and kind of what I was doing as a human being. So because of that, like, and that's the thing, it's like, you know, when you become an alcoholic and then you, you break it, you become a cocaine addict and then you break it, whatever it is, whatever addiction you have, gambling, pornography, you break it. It was like, I had like, like our athletes, you know, you're uncomfortable, uncomfortable, uncomfortable because you got to get in shape and you got to do this. And all of a sudden, when you break through that barrier, you're like, oh, man, this is awesome. This is easy. This, this is great. You know, so those guys helped 
fuel and continue. Pastor Weibel poured into me. Our our team chaplain uh, poured into me and just so when I got here, I was so on fire. I was so, I mean, just the way I am. It's just, yeah. and I knew that coming from there, coming to here, you know, it had to be a little bit different. So there's certain words you don't use. There's certain words you don't say um, to the guys. There's certain things you just don't, just don't, you know, come about as, as, as you're going about doing things. However, for instance, if I want to talk about the greater the levels, you know, I don't, I don't say the greater the devils. I don't like using that word. The greater yeah. the levels, the greater the details. Hmm. And I literally go straight to the ark and I literally talk about it. And, and I can't, I like, we have a file, we have a joke in, in our program. We have a file called from the, I can't make this up. Like, I can't make this up. And I tell those guys stories like that all the time. How different stuff just happens just because of, uh, just because it does. Yeah. And there's a guy who now, at least twice a year for the last four years, a, a, a media person, he always brings it up at any time. So now this guy's talking about it. So now I get to talk about it again. So it's, it's incredible because he always says, because I always talk about like to the guys, like it's this big, this big, and there's three floors and so, and I said, but here's the the craziest part is like, they're going to poop. They're going to throw up. They're going to like all this stuff. And he says, make an 18 inch gap below the roof to vent. Like, like there was vents. (laughs) <laughs> like guys that detail was so critical to the success so that's what i talk about with the guys before the game but he's like so was there a, was there a ramp how long was the ramp how did he but 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 my point is it gets to be like there's a guy i i i've had a maintenance guy come in here 60 some years old and we had tears in my office mm. and like there's a guy, you'd be shocked how many people ask me to pray for them. Wow. Like there's a guy that nobody in this city would think in a million years would ever do that just because of kind of what everybody, what everybody perceives. Yeah. But, but when, when he had, he had a very serious scenario and he's like, coach, can you, can you pray for my son? And I'm thinking to myself, uh oh, that's all. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's it's really really cool, and I'm really thankful. And and God just placed those dots because if if I don't go to Minneapolis and I don't listen to Coach Shy to Clemson and get on the committee, I'm never sitting across from Scott Drew. I'm never getting to Valparaiso. We're never going to L.A. And then we're never going to Waco. Yeah. You know, and the other thing too is this, like. We tell our guys this too. Like, you got to understand something. If you just treat people the way you want to be treated, that's all. That, that's all you have to do. There'll be disappointments. And people will have disagreements. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. As long as you're honest, if you don't lie, you don't have to remember anything, and you explain to them why you've made whatever decision you make, and I tell the guys, guys, in 1998, I told the athletic director at the University of Wyoming, thank you for the job offer. Thank you for the boost in salary. Thank you for hiring my wife. But I'm going to Clemson. Like, it's the best thing for my family. And I know you're disappointed, but it's the best thing for my family. 11 years later, he's the athletic director at the University of North Florida that hires me. Mm-hmm. And he was hot at me and very disappointed in me. But guys, understand something. Don't burn a bridge. And if somebody's upset with you, just end the conversation with, listen, I understand that's your thought, but this is what I'm going to do. So again, you know, you, you want to go through it. And when I say, you know, listen, I, I'm here to serve, not be served. Like, 
I don't have to say anything else. I don't have to say where it know. Yeah. Hey guys, understand something on our door. Like it says like toughness together, but it also says we're going to suffer together. So we're going to be, we're going to be honored together, but we're going to be, we're going to suffer together. I don't have to say Corinthian. So my point to you is you, 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 you can do things all the way you want to do them. But here's the other thing too. Like we tell our guys, like there's, there's two, in, in my opinion, there's two ways that trust. If you do these two things, people will trust you to the end of the world. The end of the world. Number one, they're going to know your character, how you act when no one's watching, like people are watching. They're going to know what you're like because everybody sees you, especially in today's world. Everybody sees you. So how are you going to be on campus? How are you going to be in the dorm? How are you going to be in the cap? How are you going to be at Wawa? How are you going to be at the, the mall? How are you going to be at the theater? Like, how are you after the game? Like, our guys after our loss was the most de- devastating loss. And our guys were being praised for still embracing the fans, this thing we've built, this tradition we've built, right. taking pictures and all that stuff. They were being praised for that. And at the moment, they didn't want to hear it. But afterwards, I'm like, guys, like, that's growing as a man. Like, that takes a man. Like, do you know how many people in the stands would never do that? Like, you're growing as a man. Like, you understand it was defeat, but you also understand where you're at. So, and then the second thing is this. Confidence. If you have character and confidence, people will trust you. And so confidence is something that goes over time. Like yeah. when you're explaining something and it might be something simple or it might be something more or whatever that is, but that's when you know that you're trusted and, and, and people understand your heart that obviously controls your actions, giving you results. Coach Matthew Driscoll is our guest here on sports spectrum. Coach, let me ask you about the low points. You don't have to go into detail if you don't want, but I think for all of us, <laughs> Adversity, right, right, exactly. Adversity is the great teacher of life, in my opinion. And for all of us, we have adversities. We have low points, moments that we're not proud of, whether it's personally, professionally, spiritually. How do those moments uh, help shape you? And if you want to share about those moments, please do. But tell me about maybe the low moments and how they are really a defining uh, character uh, reformation almost in a lot of ways for you. Well, um, I'm gonna, I, I'll tell you some things that are, that are, that are public too. So no one's going to be whatever. Sure. Um, you know, there, there, there's some scenarios that have transpired since I've been here and, um, depression is a, is a real thing. And, um, I can tell you it was the year of, uh, 20, um, um, was it 13? Um, hold on one second. Yeah. I got to look, I got to look and see when Dallas was a freshman. It was the year of 2013. Okay. And, um, we had just come off what was going to be a really, really great opportunity. We had all these seniors back and we had a really good team. Um, it might've been the year Gulf coast went to the sweet 16. I think it was. Yeah. That sounds right. And, uh, the, um, you know, just whatever. It, it, and we, there was a scenario that occurred during the season. One of our students had to quit. He was one of the best players that ever played here. I'm not going to go into that because that's, that's a, but it's a great story. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so anyways, we don't have the year we're going to have. And for the first time ever, my, they usually, I usually have my, this is my fifth year. Um, so 9, 10, 10, 11, 11, 12, 12, 13. So it was my fourth year going on my fifth year. And uh, the athletic director usually has my meeting at the end of the, usually like in May. He, he, so we're going to the conference tournament and um, he says, I'm going to meet with you on Monday. I was like, okay. Right. So now obviously I'm getting fired. And um, Monday's golf, there's a big golf outing for like a booster, like a, a fundraiser. 
He said, we're going to meet after the golf outing. I'm like, gee, Merry Christmas. I'm definitely getting fired. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy scenario. I get an email on, on completely by accident and um, about my help, my benefits, like a, like a, an awkward email. Right. Now, so, you know, so, you know, you're, you know, devil's working against you a little bit. He got all this stuff. So your, your mind's going crazy, right? Anyways, long story short, we got the meeting and it's a, not a good meeting. And in the meeting, he gives me an ultimatum and he says next year. Now, listen, I'm, I'm now remember now this class is going. So that Bo beach kid, I was telling you about before. Yeah. He was a freshman that year. So this next year was the class that came in where this kid named Dallas Moore he ended up being the all time leading score in division one history in the state of Florida. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Big time. We didn't know that. No, I didn't, didn't know that. He didn't even start the first scrimmage. Uh, <laughs> that changed right after the first scrimmage. Uh, but, um, but anyways, so we don't know quite now it's, it's March. Now we're not done with our class yet. There were two other pieces that came in a Juco kid. And then Dallas's best friend who was just a little too short, six, seven, just a little too short to go to those high majors. Right. He's all time. He's in almost every single category offensively and defensively in the top 10 in every single category. That tells you how good he is. But anyways, so he gives me this ultimatum. We got to go 10 and eight. It's a great story, by the way. Hmm. So I'm, I'm depressed. Um, I'm having a hard time getting out of bed. My brother committed suicide um, when I was uh, in college, hmm. 86. And, I, and I, I'm not saying I was there, but I'm just saying I'm, I'm depressed. Like I know, I know what's going on. Yeah. And um, so my wife is, I, I guess she just doesn't really see it. She just thinks it's the end of the season. I'm worn out, whatever. And um, we go to the final four and I get to the final four and coach Slocum, one of my closest friends, is it young, was at Youngstown state then? He talks to me about, I explained this whole thing to him. And he said, Drisk, listen, first of all, this is completely in God's hands. The only thing you can do is control what you can control. And by doing that, every time you have an encounter with coach, our athletic director is an old football coach with coach. Yeah. You have got to know that that encounter has to be Anything except basketball. Uh, don't allow it to be basketball. Talk about everything else. Faith. He, he, has, he, he has a faith, but he has a job. He's an AD. He's got a job, whatever. Right. So I come back and I do exactly what he said. And I'm telling you what, man, all of a sudden I'm like, I'm feeling good. Like, like, it's just like, I'm like, hey, man, like, it is what it is. I've been fired before. It wasn't like I wasn't fired. But nonetheless, I was a head coach. We, you know, we built this program, yada, yada, yada. And I also felt like it was unfair. I felt it was very unfair. Yeah. So anyways, so the summer goes through. We get back in late August. He calls me in the office. He says, Tris, you know, I've been praying about things over the summer and thinking about things. And I already put it in writing. So it's already at the president's and everything. And he says, um, you know, I probably shouldn't have done that. I said, coach, listen to me. The fact that you did it, you did it. Like, we can't change the fact that you did it. The fact that maybe our two best players tear their ACL, I can't control that. However, what I can control is who we have coming in, what we have coming back, and how much we pour into them so we can get to that record that you want us to get to, which was 10 and eight in the league. There was 18 league games. Yeah. By, by the way, Gulf coast was still had all them dudes off the sweet 16. Yeah. And that's the year at the end of that year, it was the year that Mercer beat Duke. Of course. Yeah. Well, wait a second. This gets really good. <laughs> this is how good God is. So we go through the season and we end up being like, we got a pretty good group of guys. This is the same group that's going to win two championships, by the way. 
mm-hmm. but they're still freshmen and trying to figure it out. First of all, we beat Mercer here bad. Like we're beating them bad. And actually we both put in the, the, the reserves and they actually cut it to like 12. We end up winning by like 12. So this is from the, I can't make it up file. <laughs> So we're going into the last two games of the year on the road. Now, did I tell you what the record is he told me we were supposed to be? Uh, Ten and eight. We're going into the last two games of the year on the road. And what do you think our record is? Eight and eight. Eight and eight. (laughs) And guess where we're going? Where are you going? Mercer? At Mercer. And Golf Coast. And Mercer's got seven seniors. That are the greatest players and group of players to ever play them. Right. And their senior night is that Saturday. But on Thursday night, they were honoring some of them for some of the awards they got. Because they can't do it all Saturday. It's going to be forever. Yeah. So it's it's packed. And then we're going to Kennesaw, who was probably going to finish last in the league. So it was kind of an awkward trip. Because, you know, the highs, the highs, and then you feel like you're on on the mountain, whatever. Now, the guys don't know anything about this 10 and 8 stuff. (laughs) They're just trying to to win games. Right. Coach walks in my office and says to me, man, what, you know, what a great group, what a great job. And, man, we get a split on this road trip. You know, obviously, that's what you, you know, that's pretty normal. Sure. I looked at him and I said, split. I said, coach, remember, you said 10 and 8. I said, we ain't getting no split. I'm telling you, he was sitting right here. And he looked at me and I said, I'll text you Thursday night. So <laughs> I leave. Now, I, for some reason, he, I don't know why, because he always makes the trips. He didn't make these trips. He didn't make this trip. I don't know why. Yeah. So, anyways, we go there, right? It's packed, it's nuts, the whole nine yards. We win in overtime. Right? Yep. So I texted coach, 98, baby, headed to Kennesaw. And then, of course, we beat Kennesaw and we end up 10 and 8. So you talk about a point where, you know, you really had to, you know, go in and, and it never was a why scenario or never was a, you know, I'm doing all this and, you know, look, you know, why, you know, it wasn't, I mean, what did Jesus say on the cross? Like, he, he, like, hey man, <laughs> get a, you get a brother down, <laughs> right? And you know, and, hey, it's in scripture. Sorry, you got to go. Yeah. So, you know, so that was that was just one of the instances, and there's there's plenty more stories like that. There, there's so many stories that are in that file mm-hmm. of I can't make this up. Yeah, and it's just it's just so it's so faith driven. It's not even funny. Well, what we, need to, what we need to do, Coach Driscoll, is have you back on and we'll just call it the You Can't Make It Up show and we'll just share stories go. for a whole hour. That's amazing. For time purposes, let me ask you one last question. It's a Good question. Luck we, on that one. Well, <laughs> Put a clock up. So. I got 13 minutes, so you tell me, but I'm going to ask you one more question. You, and I'm curious to know what your answer is. We've been in a pandemic. We've been in a quarantine. Life has changed. We talk about that. Uh, it's just a different world that we live in than it was months ago. What's the great lesson the Lord is showing you right now during all this? What's he teaching you? I think the first thing that comes, as soon as you said it, the first thing that came to mind is, is we've got to continue to be passionate and compassion Mm -hmm. and have empathy. And I'm a hugger and my world's going to change, but we've got to continue because of the distance you automatically lose the connection, the the ability to maybe make somebody feel wanted or make somebody feel close or make somebody stop hurting or make somebody stop crying. And my arms keep going out, but I don't have a seven five wingspan. <laughs> but 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 God has really placed it on my heart. I just had to talk this morning with uh, Fernanda, my I love her seventy two at Dunkin' Donuts. You get my coffee every day about this particular. And it's been on my heart since the beginning because I know 
child abuse is up. I know sexual assault is up. I know divorce rate is up. Yeah. All that stuff is up because everybody's been unfortunately in. And and God is just continuing. And I've talked about this verbatim and I will talk about it and I will continue to put it on Twitter and, and share it. But we can't lose that ability to listen mm. and that ability to to have the servant's mentality and the and the heart to 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 want to make things or, or want to help people. Um, that is definitely the number one thing that's been placed on my heart. I say the other thing too God has really enlightened me to is we're able to adjust if we allow our heart to lead us. And what I mean by that is too many times when we adjust, it starts up here and it starts with can't and won't and shouldn't and can't and all those words that we don't ever want to use. 366 times in this book I love to read and it's leap year, so good news. There you it's go. good for every day, right? It talks about not having that and having the ability to make that change and that adjustment as you go. We don't use the word, we only use the word excited and eager in our program. We don't use the word anxious um, because we don't want that to be part of of who we are. We're excited and eager about whatever it is we're going to do because we're going to do it from our heart. So that adjustment has been on the forefront of me as well too. And, and, And understanding that it is what it is. Let's we, what we tell our guys. It's on, it's on my back wall. Like just do what we do and be who we are. Mm. That's all. Just do what we do and be who we are. And that's the biggest problem with athletes or probably society is, you know, it's when you don't let what you can't do get in the way with what you can. So just, I'm not saying don't, get better at stuff. That's not my point. But my point is like, do what you do. And if that's what you're really good at, be who you are. So yeah, that's really good. He is coach Matthew Driscoll. North. Florida. I got that done in four minutes, by the way. I that saved was, you some time. Coach, I'm proud you of you. Use the restroom before your next interview. <laughs> <laughs> it's like stairway to heaven. You just put the song on and you go walk away. And about eight minutes later, you come back and there it is. <laughs> by the way, speak, speaking of that, yeah. Um, I will say this. I got to preach one of my the first time ever in a church and using a slideshow and all that stuff. Sure. I was talking about NF's album just came out, mm-hmm. The Search. And in The Search, it talks about how we have these things that we hold underwater like we're a little kid. And all of a sudden we let it go and it comes up and it's bubbly and, and what, but that's that stuff inside us, that forgiveness, that oh, yeah. those lies, those things that we hold down. And all of a sudden, like it says in the song, it comes out out of nowhere, like an evil surprise. Mm-hmm. And it hovers over you to tell you millions of lies. Right. And JT was in the audience and he played for us. And somehow that got him going And long story short, there was other things that transpired, but he got help in August. And the mental illness aspect of where we're going to go as well, I think that really needs to be continually talked about, unpeeled, put out there so that you can understand where people are coming from because unemployment rates are up and job changes are different. And, and maybe the, they went from a two working family to a one, or there's so much stuff going on. I I just want to make sure that we're, we're having that ability. Like, you know, like, like NF says, you know, he actually has a song on that album called change. It's really good. Yeah. But, but, you know, when he talks about that, how this whole thing's going to transpire once we get back outside the walls. Mm -hmm. No, that's really great. Coach, thank you so much. We're going to do this again because we got so much more to talk about. I really, really appreciate your heart for, for obviously for the Lord, but for other people and for your job, you have such passion and I'm, I'm inspired by just talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's been awesome.
That was Coach Matthew Driscoll, North Florida head basketball coach. I told you in the beginning of this podcast, the man has a ton of energy and a ton of wisdom. And I told you, I think I asked five questions the whole podcast, and I'm very much okay with that. He had a ton of great things to say, and I'm so glad that he joined us here. I got to go back and listen again because I got to take some notes and, and get some of that wisdom that Matthew Driscoll just shared with all of us here on the show. And it's funny, when I mentioned I got 13 minutes, I think it was when I started asking the last question, I literally had 13 minutes until I had to get to my next meeting, and I was worried that my last question was going to be a 13-minute answer. Thankfully, Coach was uh, more gracious uh, than I maybe anticipated in the sense of going shorter with his answer, but he was awesome. Uh, Some of these podcasts run 25, 30 minutes. Some of them run maybe 40. This run, obviously, is more than that, around the 50 to 52-minute mark, and you know, I'm okay with that. You know, some interviews are shorter, but this one was worth it. This one was worth going a little bit longer on because he has a ton of great wisdom and energy and things to share. He encouraged me. I hope he encouraged you as well. Thanks so much to Matthew Driscoll for joining us here today on Sports Spectrum. We also want to thank our partners, Water Mission. We love what Water Mission is about, fighting the global water crisis. Make sure you're praying for them, and you can learn more about them by going to watermission.org, watermission.org. Org. And don't forget our friends at Compassion International, the most trusted child development ministry in the world. You can team up with them right now to release children from poverty by going to Compassion.com slash team up. Compassion.com slash team up and learn about the great work they're doing and sponsor a child today. Thank you again so much for listening. You can reach us directly by emailing me, Jason at sportsspectrum.com, Jason at sportsspectrum.com. Dot com. Give us a follow over on our social media pages. Just search Sports Spectrum. You'll find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And then check out our website, sportspectrum.com. Thank you again so much for joining us. We'll see you next time right here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. Hope you all have a great rest of your day. <laughs>